All right, guys, so today I'm going to be showing you my rank one custom tactics that got me not one rank one, not two rank ones, but three rank ones. So that includes a 20 and 0 in one hour and 40 minutes. These custom tactics are absolutely bonkers and are definitely my favorite to use right now on FIFA 23. There are some very important parts of this video which are going to show you why these work so well and the players that you need to use in certain positions to make this formation work and to make the tactics work. So let's get into it. For cheap FIFA 23 coins, make sure to check out mmoexp.com to get fast and reliable coins. And make sure you use code VIPER at checkout, get yourself a 5% discount. Guys, if you are enjoying the content, make sure you leave a like on this video and make sure you subscribe to the channel. About 70% of you are not subscribed and I'm bringing you this content every single week. I'm here to provide you with the best tactics and the best player reviews that you will see around on YouTube in this current day and age. So I really appreciate it if you could subscribe. Without further ado, let's talk about the team and it's going to be the full one two one two narrow again but with very altered custom tactics and instructions as we start talking about the team guys which is what i wanted to do first of course this is the team that got me rank one on my road to glory the only difference is i had donnarumma in there i believe maybe not donnarumma i can't remember who i did allison actually was in that um and the thing about this formation the way i'm currently playing it it's very very catered to people that like to be aggressive like to win the ball back fast which means you need certain players in certain positions to make this formation work down to a T. Something else I've got to say as well, guys, is this formation and tactics work on both old and new gen with the current players that we are using. I'm gonna go over the players now. So first one, I wanna talk about the center backs and why they're so good and why they work in this formation so well. So Virgil van Dijk and Rudiger are our two center backs. And the thing that they both have in common is of course they're really fast, both at 81 and 82 pace respectively, with also a shadow applied. The thing about Virgil and Rudiger, they both have insane aggression and strength. Of course, the pace is a really good bonus, but the aggression and, and strength on these two cards is going to really, really help you to win the ball back quickly. And you can trust these two just the only two staying back. Now, guys, the fullbacks are going to be really important, and we're going to go to the bench for this as well. But having good stamina on your fullbacks is important as much as you can get. Obviously, Walker and Hernandez have 90 and 86 respectively, and they're both really, really strong. You can see that they're with 81 and uh, also 80 strength and they're also relatively uh, aggressive as well which is something that i really like to have on my fullbacks and my defensive line generally just because it's going to be important to the way the team plays okay um, and we have an anchor on walker and we have a sentinel on tio hernandez so they're both getting a strength boost which i also find to be very important as they're going to be our probably number one players in the team and if they do run low on stamina Having people like Fring Pong on your bench that you can alternate into position. You know, he comes on quite a lot at CDM for me, but he can also play in either fullback position. Same with Robertone as well. Even though he's a little bit slower, he can definitely play in the fullback roles as well. And that is very important that you're able to switch out your fullbacks if they get drained on stamina. And then as we move in to the midfield, of course, you can probably tell who our CDM is going to be here, and it's Sandro Tonali. I'm, also, I'm not the biggest fan of Sandro Tonali in game. He's got that four star weak foot that I think is really valuable in the CDM role, and he's also very fast. Um, the thing about the CDMs on this game is you need to have them to, you know, need to have a four star weak foot at the very minimum, and they also need to be really fast and good passers. Tonali lacks a little bit the passing, but he is really fast and he has that four star weak foot. He's probably the next upgrade to this team. But he done okay this weekend, league, you know, um, and that's important. You know, the the, the, the eighty one pace with the four star week for an okay passing is paramount to this position. This is why I don't like Kante this year because he's got a, what a two star or three star week foot, and his passing generally is quite poor. You need to have somebody that's able to have the four star week foot, have a bit of a big body type in game, and is fast and good at passing. That is why we have Tonali in there. As I said, he's the next upgrade to the team. I want Yaya Torre or someone in there next but he still does fit this team very well. Then outside of that, you need players that have really good Trevella shots. Um, my ideal scenario here would be probably to drop Nakata, even though he's my first owner of hero card that I got, and put Lucas Paqueta in, and have De Bruyne on the right-hand side, and then Paqueta on the left-hand side, to be able to hit them Trevellas constantly, because these two players are obviously meant to be in here to dictate the play and have the really good passing, which they both do offer in abundance. But having two right footers means you don't get the Travellers all the time. And I would recommend getting a left footed and right footed player as your two box to boxes if you can. Guys, as we move into the strike force, I don't have too much to say here. If you do skills, make sure you at least have one five star skiller. Make sure you have somebody like Chiesa who can just run in behind constantly. And then make sure whoever's playing your cam roll, which is going to be carrying Benzema for us, make sure he has good passing, good dribbling. It's okay physically, 
And if you can get the five star, five star here, even better. But I'd probably say that the five star weak foot is a little bit more important than the five star skills. Even though if you can get both, it is definitely an added bonus. Benzema is really good in the cam roll, but he's just a little bit slow for my liking. And what ends up happening at usually about half time, I'm not really feeling how Benzema's playing. I'll bring on Lorenzo Insigne and he's there to just offer that good passing and to be a little bit more direct and dynamic in the way he can move. And that is why I like bringing him on quite a lot. As I said, the strikers in this formation are Rashford and Chiesa. What we have with Chiesa is insane dribbling, okay passing and really good shooting with a little bit of strength outside there as well. And then Rashford is in the team to be that bit of a dynamic player. You know, the five star skills. Yes, his weak foot's poor, but the five star skills are why he's in the team. And the other thing I wanted to say, guys, about the fullbacks is they actually score quite a lot of goals for me. Kyle Walker has got five goals and nine assists in 69 yeah, games. Tio Hernandez has also played 69 games yeah, with four boy. goals and six assists. So they do get involved in the attack an awful lot. All of the goals that they have scored as well, guys, has been from Travellers. So that is why I highly recommend, you know, same for the midfielders to have a left foot and right footed player on each side. So you can bang the Travellers as they are probably the number one way to score goals right now. All right, guys. So with all of that out of the way, now it's very important that you guys do go back and watch that if you do want to learn how to play this formation correctly. But now we're going to go on to the instructions and they're quite similar to what you're used to, but a big change has been on both of the strikers. So both of these are now going to be on stay central, getting behind and nothing for the defensive support, not stay forward, not come back on defense. So both on balance there which is something that I've never actually used, but I like it quite a lot because they do drop a little bit deeper when they need to support. You know, they're going behind quite a lot, but they are more available for passes until, you know, you're starting a counter-attack and then they will go in behind, which is really nice, actually. It creates an opportunity to get the ball to your strikers and then play a lot of one-twos between them a bit earlier on than you would usually. So having this on just basic defensive support, I found to be really, really good for the kind of fluidity of the team and the kind of, ability to be able to kind of link up the play a little bit better. As we move down to the cam guys, the only thing you want to put on your cam for any version, any player you've got here needs to just be on stay forward. That's what we've got on Benzema. And stay forward means that they don't just drift. Quite often when you don't have them on stay forward, they're not playing like the left centre mid role with De Bruyne. So you've got two left centre mids. It's really, really odd. It's a bit of a bug in the game. It's been in the game for years. So make sure you have this on stay forward. Come back on defence, does not work on your cam. It creates a divide in your team and you're kind of in a position where you just don't have the right attacking options to make it work. So make sure save forward is on your cam. Now, a lot of people for their centre mids, they put them on cover centre. We do not want to do that. And I'll explain why shortly. But cover centre on your two box-to-box -box midfielders will hurt you a lot more than it will do anything good for you. The reason for that. We will explain shortly, as I just said, but it's to do with the fullback. So make sure you have, have these on cover wing. And if the fullbacks get pushed out of position at all, your two box to boxes will help that position, which is nice and really important to this formation. Now moving on to the CDM, we've got cut parting lanes that stay back while attacking and cover center. Pretty standard for your CDMs on this game. Cut passing lanes, I've tried out an awful lot. I've also tried out balance quite a lot and I really don't like man mark this year. So either go for balance or cut passing lanes, depending on what you like. But I found cut passing lanes to be the best. The stay up while attacking is obviously very, very normal to have on your CDM. Drop between defenders if he's a proper, proper CDM that can offer nothing going forward. So Kante, for example, would be okay on drop between defenders. But because Tonali's got a little bit of ability going forward, the four-star weak foot, an okay passing, we like to just have him on stay up while attacking. For the fullbacks, guys, they're both on stay up while attacking. But if you know... Anything about me, I like to change this in game. It's a bit more dynamic and a bit more versatile when you use it in game. So they're on stay back here, but if I'm in a really tight game, I keep them on stay back. In game though, if I'm dominating and I just want to get the guy to rage quit, I'll put them on attacking fullbacks and hug sideline. Side the way you're going to do that is you're going to press up on your D-pad and you're going to go left and right to get the hug sideline and attacking fullbacks on. And that is how I kind of set it up. You know, stay back wide while attacking by default, but then if I want to change it a bit, a bit more dynamic in game, I can do it from the in-game screens instead of changing up this, which is nice because you don't want to keep pausing the game to be able to change this all the time. And that is why I like doing it from the D-pad menu. All right then guys, as we move into the custom tactics, these are going to be the most important thing for this uh, formation. So. As we get into it, first of all, we are going to be on press after possession loss. Now, 
The reason I like this a lot, once again, it's a Gagan press. It's very, very aggressive. As I said to you earlier on in the video, if you did watch it all, aggression is massive on this formation. So having aggression alongside the press after possession loss is going to be the way you get this to work correctly. So this is gonna drain your stamina a little bit more than usual, especially on your fullbacks. So that is why I suggest you have fullbacks on your bench that you can bring on to help you out if your stamina drains quite heavily on your fullbacks, which it will quite often if you play a full 90 minutes. The idea is though you'll get a lot of rage quits with this formation. If you are good at the game and if you take the time to learn this formation, you'll be able to get a lot of rage quits. So press after possession loss is, as I said, really aggressive, but is insanely good if you have the right players and you are good enough at the game and you learn this formation correctly, it will absolutely dominate for you. As you move on to width, nothing too major here. We're just gonna be on 50 width. You know, you don't want to drop this anymore as if you start to drop it, then you're gonna get hit down the flanks too hard. And if you push it up too much, it's gonna get hit direct all the time, which is what the 4-1-2-1-2 narrow is. You know, it's a very direct formation, overload in the midfield, and then the two strikers to be able to link up the play together. So having this just on balance kind of gives you the best of both worlds. You don't get hit too hard on the flanks. You don't get hit too hard down the middle, direct. So having this on 50 is just the best of both worlds. So now for the depth, we actually have this on something a little bit higher than usual, but you know, nothing too major. It's just gonna be on 55. The reason I like to have this on 55 is I trust myself to play the right offside traps. I trust my two center backs to be able to deal with over the tops because they're very fast and they take long strides. Both got a shadow on them as well, which I highly recommend you guys do, no matter who your centre back is. And that's why I have it on 55, you know. Just a little bit higher than normal. So if they're trying to do a lot of direct passes into their strikers, they're a little bit higher. And as I said earlier, once again, they're really aggressive. So they end up pushing up a little bit higher anyway and trying to win the ball back quicker. So that is why I really, really like the defenders and these tactics set up together because it just works so, so well. Moving on to the build-up play, we've got fast build-up. And this is a tactic this year that I've had a lot of time spent with it. Didn't enjoy it too much at the start, then liked it a little bit and then didn't like it again, but it is king. Fast build up with the chance creation that we're gonna put on is absolutely insane. Fast build up is essentially players move forward quicker, they're in more advanced positions more quickly and they are just available more, you know? This game is very direct and a lot of over the tops, a lot of R1 passes in to your forwards and a lot of link up play. So you want lots of options when you're going forward to hit the Travellers, to be able to go in behind, to be able to do whatever you want to do. And that's what fast build up offers. Now with the fast build up and stay back while attacking on your fullbacks, you will see that they will advance a little bit more than normal, even though they're on stay back while attacking. So you need to be a bit careful with that, okay? Um, still, I love this and fast build up is king for me. Was last year, is this year again. And it's just really good for all styles of play, really. You know, at the end of the day, this is a counter-attacking formation. This is a formation set up to play like Liverpool. Maybe not so much this year, but when they won the Premier League and the Champions League, um, this does play very similar to the way Liverpool played that year. You know, a lot of fast attacks moved into a game and press when you lose the ball to be able to get it back quickly. And you're already in a transition there where, you know, you've won the ball back in the middle of the park. They're pushing up you've got an opportunity to just play an incisive pass and get through. A fast build-up does offer that really, really well. Therefore, the chance creation that makes a fast build-up work even better is direct passing. Direct passing means the kind of the players can offer the runs in behind, but they like the ball to feet quite a lot. And it's just insanely, insanely good. If your players have good attack positioning, they know how to kind of like swivel in behind and then bring the ball to feet. It's very, very aggressive once again, the direct passing is but it's good for over the tops and also through balls. So that is why I like the direct passing. Definitely the best chance creation on the game right now by a country mile. So make sure you try that one out guys, as it is really, really effective. For the width, we've actually got this a little bit higher than we usually do on the 4-1-2-1-2 narrow. And it's gonna be on 40. Now I like to have this lower than 50 because this formation is already quite direct. You want your players to be kind of close together in the attacking kind of scenarios. Having the width a little bit lower in the full one to one narrow will help you out as you just want it to stay compact and direct in the attack. You've got a lot of options for one twos when you drop this down a little bit lower. So having this on 40 is a good balance, you know. I've tried it on like 20, I've tried it on 30, I've tried it on like 10 as well. But I think 40 is good because you've got a little bit of whip still, 
but then they are a little bit closer together to offer one two so that is why i like to have that on 40. four players in the box guys we like to have this on six the reason i like to have this on six is you get a lot of opportunities with your fullbacks when you start putting them on the attacking fullbacks to cross to go for travellers to um pass it to the edge of the box and this is insane this is one of the best things about this formation is because the fullbacks are good shooting wise because travellers are so broken you can really 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 mess up your opponent with this because crossing is really good uh, as i said going to the edge of the box is really good travellers are really good so it gives you three options for what you want to do when you get to this position with your fullback and more often than not you kind of don't go for that traveller until you're confident that it's going to go in and you'll score every time. Having this high allows that to happen. A lot of different opportunities. They're more worried about the players in the box than your fullback. They're thinking, oh, he's not going to shoot with his fullback. And you bang out a traveller and it's an easy goal. So that is why I like to have this nice and high. Then, guys, for corners and free kicks, it's kind of up to you. I like the corners on two for my certain corner routine. I whack it all the way back to the kind of guy who's sitting about 30 yards out. And I sprint boost into the edge of the box and then go for a Travella shot. So having this on two works really well for me. And then free kicks is completely up to you as well. I have this on two, but for no reason at all. Um, I don't really have any reason to put this on whatever. You know, it's kind of up to you on the free kicks, but corners kind of depends on your corner routine. And mine only requires two to make it available. So guys, those are the tactics for the 4 one 2 2 narrow. As I said again, guys, make sure you watch the entire video here. Let me know what you think of the tactics down below as well, as I do think these are the king tactics right now. And I'm getting 19 and ones every week, and I got a 20 and 0 in one hour, 40 minutes, with I think every single game was a rage quit before the half time. Absolutely bonkers, guys. Really, really like this formation, really like this team. Hope you guys do find a bit of joy with this. That's a bit of a different dimension to your playing style. Guys, if you did enjoy today's video, make sure you leave a like on it, subscribe to the channel, and turn on the bell so you don't miss a video. But guys, it's gonna be it for me for now, so take care.